Welcome to the Vancouver Hustlers, guys. I'm your host, Umar Khan, alongside with... Sunil Prasad. I want to do it. Yeah, here we come. Some kind of... Here we come. I want to do it. Here we come. Sunil Prasad. Today, this episode is missing Joshua. Um, Joshua, where are you, man? I'm where missing are you, buddy. Josh? Like, want to meet you. You know Josh was super excited to meet you, eh? Really? Long story short, he couldn't make it here Next today. time. The follow-up. The follow-up. The sequel. So, Sunil, let's just jump right into your life, Sunil. You know, like, give us a little story about who you are. Ah, uh, Sunil Prasad, born and raised in Vancouver. Uh, been in the business world close to 20 years. 20 years. Uh, it, is, it hasn't always been mortgages. I started off um, as an investor, actually. Cool. Investing in the stock market. And eventually in real estate, uh, and then used to buy and and build homes, uh, renovate and then sell that off. Uh, eventually got into um, after you know, after that I, I got into uh, mortgages. Mortgages. And then since that from that point on, we have just been doing uh, focusing on a very niche market, which is the private market, and uh, cool. uh, still deal heavily with the construction trades and around the city and, and finance them and yeah it's, that's, that's awesome. what we do man and then this awesome. the vlog started but six seven months ago and okay. uh so this is the this is another business of uh definitely right yeah and, and uh, something that's really like passion for right because like, i've seen your clips your clips are beautiful uh shout out shout out dylan. to dylan right here i like to say i, I taught him everything i know but yeah. <laughs> dylan's putting the work man he's holding it down dylan's holding it down, <laughs> he's holding it down. He but yeah, so what's your background though? Like your parents? Human. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, background. Like cultural? Cultural, yeah. Yeah, my, my parents originally, uh, well, originally they're, they're from India, but okay. uh, my mom and dad were raised in, uh, born and raised in Fiji. Nice. And then they came to Canada in the, in the early 70s. Early 70s? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to, uh, late 60s, early 70s, I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. The reason I ask is, like, I, I feel like, for me, I don't, coming out of high school, right, I have the immigrant parent mentality where it's like, you got to go to school, right? Not just school, but university. So, like, was that pressure on you, too? No. You know? Your parents understand what business was, or, like... <sighs> I, I failed out of school, so oh, <laughs> you, shoot. Can't, you can't really push yeah. something that yeah, really yeah, hasn't yeah. gone... Uh, Education was big at home, yeah, right? Yeah. It's you know we we had we had times where three o'clock school's over. You know you 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 know if there's like sports or like I was big into basketball. You know oh, play basketball, yeah. do that stuff, and then when you're home, it's you go come home, have a snack, and then there's like two hours of of like study time, study time yeah, right? Yeah. Study time was definitely there, and then. Uh, then after that, we got to watch TV for like a half an hour, an hour, and then you know in bed by like eight thirty nine, mm-hmm. and it's it was like that all the way until you know what I like to say, right through high school. Okay. Right. I, well, I think in grade eleven and twelve, we don't go to bed at eight thirty. We'll probably yeah, yeah, yeah. went to bed more like ten. Okay. But you know, make sure that that sleeping was there, and uh, you know, my my parents didn't let me out after, okay. you know, my dad said. There's nothing for you to do after 10 p.m. at the age of 18. Yeah. At the age of 17, there's there's nothing there. there right? Truly, yeah, there is. Yeah. When when the time is right, when you're 19 plus and all this stuff, and you can go out and have fun, then you know we're not gonna you know have a curfew on you. And, and sure enough, when that time hit, boom, there there's nothing where you got to go out. So that saved me from you know hanging out with the with the bad. Definitely. Uh, and then I had I always had family members around me that uh, were business owners. Cool. Or real estate investors and developers and everything else, and you know my parents were investing in real estate as well. So I got to hang out and see and and do everything. And then cool. when the time was right, Boom. and the money was there, yeah, it just took off. Right? That's genius, especially like you're talking about like 20, 30 years ago, right? The game was much different then, right, compared to well, now. yeah, I'm talking about maybe the, not quite thirty years ago, but definitely twenty five years ago. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah, but like how, how like how much has the game changed? Yeah, then? No, I don't think the game has changed. No? No. no, I think the way we do it, like social media, has has you know, it wasn't it wasn't yeah, around yeah. then, so information wasn't as fast. But you know, working hard, saving that money, investing in real estate, investing wherever, definitely, it hasn't but, but, changed. But, but the dollar yeah, that's bigger. Yeah. yeah, the numbers, the right? numbers got bigger. Yeah. yeah. 
But like, does it, would you say that makes it harder, or you say? Well, we're just talking about Vancouver. But remember, a lot of these guys are out somewhere else, right? That's so, true. oh, the, the market's there. Go to the market. Cool. You know, if you can't afford it here, then you know, can you afford it in in Saskatchewan? Go to Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. You know, just just move. Just cool. If he has a young, I think most of the people watching this stuff is is young, right? Yeah. So if you can't afford the million dollar home here, then go look in an area where you can afford a two hundred thousand dollar place. If you want to go into the real estate game, if not, and and you want to build something else, you want to build a brand or build a business, find that area. Find where you can, you know, add value to people and and go there and do it. Definitely, that's nuts. So, I guess family was a a big influence on you getting into the business. For sure, for sure. My family and my surroundings were okay. Were big, Definitely. big thing there. Here's my th- I I I never like being locked down at a job. I, I'm a guy that speaks his mind. If I speak my mind, you know, people don't like it. You get fired, whatever yeah. it is, and wasn't for me. So Definitely. you know, entrepreneurship. I, I, you know, this is my platform. This is where I build. This is where the mistakes are made. This is where I learn, and this is where I grow. Okay. Yes. And speaking about growth and stuff, right? What were some key mistakes that you made in your career that you like that really made you Eagle. who you are? Eagle. Eagle. Yeah. Eagle, man. Eagle for the first fifteen years. Huge ego, until I met my mentor, and just hit me yeah. hard. Hit me hard, like right here, right. Yeah. And, and from that point, then it started started changes. Like it's not about the money. It's not about the power. You know what? It's about being a leader. It's about training people around you. This kid here, Dylan, right? When he like the amount of confidence this guy has right now, and his leadership skill is just growing like crazy. And I love seeing that. That's what I'm here for man definitely right that you know i I love helping people out to me that brings me more joy than than pretty much anything man. that's crazy right especially like if you take someone who's like you see they're like a shy person not even shy but like a person that has so much potential to grow and you could be that that water to see that that's a lot lot of them are i see a lot of younger younger people that come into the office and the only thing that's stopping them from growing is the lack of leadership. Okay. Right? That they probably didn't have growing up. Yeah. Or it was the wrong one. Okay. Right? It's, it's like this this plant right here. When it doesn't have water, the water is the leader. You put that water in it, it just flourishes. 100%. Right? And that's, that's all it. That's, that's it. Right? right? So that's just add that little little skill to it and, okay. and, and give uh, it. And what tips can you give? Because there's, there's some kids where they're in a position where they can't like like they can't get out or they can't find the leaders that they want the only leaders they have are like school teachers which they might not feel that they have the qualifications to lead them right what advice can you give someone like that oh today's so much easier man with social media 100 percent. go out and find them just go out and find them right okay. it's not it's not gonna be hard there's no i, I just can't say you know you just go down to the starbucks and you'll find somebody yeah, 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 yeah you know uh if you're looking for a business leader find the business you want to be in okay right and then look, look in the community if they're there and go talk to them. See if you, you jab with them. If not, then you know go to the next one. You'll find the right one. I always say when the student is ready, the teacher will teach, right? In my experience, yeah. every time I was ready, those doors swung open, okay. right? And then yeah. the, the right person came yeah, in, yeah, yeah. right? It's just when I'm like, when everything is ready, my gut is ready, my heart is ready, all my senses are firing. Then the right person comes in. But like, like expand on that. Like, what do you mean by when you are ready? Like mentally or like mentally ready? There's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other way. Physically ready? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm I got money, <laughs> so I can go pay for this coach. No. No. You, you know, uh, this. You know, my heart is right here. My my gut is here. Something is happening in my life that I don't want. Right. I want to get out of that. And how do I get to the next path? Cool. Right. I'm failing here. The people I'm hanging around with are. Are, are bad they're you know always doing whatever and I don't, I don't want to be a part of that and you know my burning desire is to get out of it that's what I mean man once you have that you know, when, you, when you feel it yeah. then and on your way as on your journey of entrepreneurship were there points where it's like you had to cut certain people out oh for sure yeah yeah like what t- like what types of people I love it yeah <laughs> I love it was that hard for you though no 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 it's just like oh fuck off and he's gone oh, no no I don't <laughs> say that but I just kind of I limit my, my my time there. Okay. Let's just say I'm going out with a group of people and we're sitting there around uh, and everyone's complaining about their, their work and their bosses and things like that. And eventually I'm like, well, I don't want to listen to yeah. this. So, 
know what, guys? I'm gonna take off. See you guys next time. And next time they call me out, and then uh, you're busy. You know, I'm sorry, man. No, I'm, I'm not busy. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not into it. It's not my. So you just be straight with them. You yeah, don't hear just, bullshit. Just be just straight, like, man. And then what happens is when, like I said, when one door closes, another one opens, right? When the door, the next door opens, you're gonna start finding people that are in the niche that you want. You're gonna start finding young entrepreneurs, and you're gonna start finding their leaders in there. You're gonna start finding their mentors, and then now that becomes your group. And then eventually you grow out of that group. You to go, go go to another group, and then it gets bigger and. Definitely. It. Definitely. And when you found your first formal mentor, how how did you go about that? Well, I had many mentors in my lifetime, right? So, uh, you know, you're not gonna always have one. You're gonna have one for your personal, one for your business, yep. one for, one for yep. relations, like everything else. But right? I mean, like, do, did you have like a specific or like a mentor for business specifically, like kind of like your like your yeah yeah? Whereas it was like student teacher relationship, or was it more so of like you hang around him and like pick up things? Like, well, my original mentor was 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 family member. Okay. Right. That that was in, in the yeah, business yeah. side at a young age. Yeah. And the the more you grow, right? The, yeah. yeah. You know, some business coach will, will take you or mentor will take you from, like, say, 500000 to a million. And then th- th- there's the cap. And then you, I'm just talking dollars, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. And then now the next one will take you from a million to five million, right? So yeah, yeah. You, you'll, you'll grow, right? Okay. And, uh, you know, that, those are just numbers. But some other ones will, will, you know, explain how Instagram works. And then you'll have another one to explain you how, how uh, Facebook and YouTube and all this work, right? So th- th- those can be all mentors as well, right? Just, cool. just teaching you and guiding you along the way. And as we're talking about the mentor topic, is there any specific books that you recommend or that you've read that you found like close to your heart? Or are you big on reading? <laughs> there's, there's a few up there. Uh, yeah, I'm big on reading, but the mentorship one, no, I, I have not found no. a, a book on uh, on mentorship that uh, not even like specific mentorship, but I mean like a book that you felt. Like maybe had guided you or like you took like lessons from no, no no I went directly to the to source right? yeah I just, I just go you know what I I need to find I need to really here's my thing when I read a book right there's no accountability there I need somebody there all the time ah. right my accountability is is a person. mentor that I'm I'm there with all the time I can talk to you what's going on okay this is what we need to do this week and this week. that's what I need that's that's the drive cool and that's what gets me from this little step to a to a big giant step right was uh, was having something like that definitely so a book to me is it, it helps in certain things but I need my ass kicked yeah, yeah eh? that's but that's key like credibility and stuff right or, or, sorry accountability. accountability right that's big because once you're accountable right it becomes not just of just you but now you're like you're, you're on the line like whatever like if you like let's just say I, you're my mentor right now i have to be afraid because if i don't do what you tell me there's gonna be someone there who's gonna be like well, you're not gonna respect me no yeah more. exactly a book you can close and, and kind of yeah put it put in the bookshelf or wherever or like me I, I have everything on my phone i just kind of turn it off and yeah, you know yeah. i'm done but this was like yeah. you know i gotta meet at 3 p.m on thursday and you know accountability yeah and that's what makes me grow man it's the accountability sweet Sweet. That's actually, whew, that was like mind blowing. Cause for me, it's like personally, I go to books a lot. Like I read all sorts of different books and stuff because I feel like it's cool. Cause you pick up things that you normally wouldn't pick up, right? And I, I was I'm actually on this like venture of finding a mentor, right? Someone who's kind of doing what I'm doing. But the problem for me is I don't know what I'm doing yet. See, in certain things, it's fine. The book is fine, right? But it is my life. That's true. This is my life. It's not my business life. It's my life, man. Definitely. Because if I don't work on this. You know, am I gonna affect my future children? Am I gonna affect my future future spouse? Am I gonna affect my uh, my mom and dad, my sisters? You know, this is like, this is very important to me, right? So, you know what, a book's not gonna help me there, man. Hundred percent. Right? Oh, I agree with you. And then, since we're speaking about family, are you married? You have kids? No. 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 Okay. Cool. I have somebody, but I'm not married. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. No, I was, I was gonna say because like. A lot of people say that sometimes love kind of gets in the way of their their adventures. How, like, c- can you relate to that or no, 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 no? Because again, this is through my mentor. I was taught in in a relationship, in any relationship, in a business relationship, or your family relationship, or relationship with your with your spouse. There's there's non negotiables, and for me, me for me, one of the non negotiables was business is a very big part for me. Okay. Right. And if somebody comes into my life and, and says, I, I'm not a big fan of business, uh, I don't, 
like it when somebody works too long or they just kind of focus on growing their business. I don't like that. Guess what? You're not for me. See you later. Bye. Right? So if I've done that work, everything I, I need in my life is right there. So no. No, eh? Not at all. Okay, cool. Not at all. Cool. Now, if I work every single Sunday and she's going to be pissed off, yeah. I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> my mom's going to be pissed off, right? It's, it's, so I, I don't work on Sundays. but Speaking about that, right? This whole like... Always twenty four seven working. How much? How much do you believe in that? I don't believe in it at all. No, eh? No, no. Y- your body needs rest, man. One hundred percent. It's it's not. It's not about working twenty four seven. It's about when when you're up and when you're, when you're like, instead of watching TV all day long, like six, seven, eight, nine hours yeah. a day, you gotta work there. And it's in the beginning you're gonna work much harder than you are later on, because that's when. All the, the foundation, building, yeah, everything the foundation. Is, is built, right? We need try. We need times off. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, I literally work anywhere between twelve to sixteen hours a day, but I'm not going hard every single. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. it's like breaks. And like, I'm taking like, breaks, man. Yeah. Like today, like how many breaks we took? Like, uh, I'm done staring at the computer or being on the phone. I need a fifteen minute walk, and I just go walk around, walk. come back, yeah. and you know, refresh again, and, and boom, hit it again, right? But what about even in your foundation phases? How was it then? Yeah, it worked a lot. Yeah? yeah, was it like seven days? But I still, eight? I still took breaks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now because like, I feel like a lot of young guys, right? Yeah. Even Josh, shout out to you, bro. He's kind of like, fuck going out. He's yeah. like, bro, yo, we gotta, we gotta get it. I'm like, bro, bro, like, let's like, you know, we can serve the boys. Right? How old are you? Oh, 19. 19. Turning 20 this year. Okay, so you know me, my whole 20 is I didn't drink. Oh. I, I had, I had probably, uh, maybe, two or three in in a year. But even then, it was just quick sips. I went out, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, I just didn't like the taste, didn't like anything. It's but not for everyone. Really. It's not for everyone. So that gave me the money later on because the amount that I saved. Yeah, yeah. I still got to hang out with friends, right? But I wouldn't go all the time. Cool. Right? And this allowed me to just stay home okay. and, and work. But a good thing for me going out was I got to network. I got to meet a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. So I knew where to go. I wasn't going to the night loud nightclubs. I was just going more to the ho- hotel lounges. I had a conversation with this guy uh, just on the weekend. And I said when I was younger, I would find the conferences in the area, right? I wouldn't go to those conferences because I could not, I could not afford to go there. But I would go at 7, 8, 9 p.m. to all the <laughs> hotel lounges, right? Where yeah. they're all sitting there having a bite to eat and having a yeah. drink. And you just network with them and you meet so many. I still genius. do that till today. That's freaking genius. Right? And... So I, I get you not not going out for sure and hustle. Well, it's, it's not him. It's, 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 but it's everyone. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to yeah, everyone. Here, right? yeah. I'm talking to everyone here, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, if you can if you can get out and and network and and talk here and it, it's cool. It's good. It's I'm good, just, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For business, especially for business, right? Because the more people you know, right? Like the more things you could possibly. Oh, do, the right? amount of people I met and the deals that we've done and uh, the information I got is second to none. I. I, I couldn't get that in school or anywhere, man. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. No, it's, it's facts. And then, yeah, like, so what do you guys do in this office specifically? Mortgages. Yeah. Mortgages? Mortgages. And what does your day look like? How's it structured? Uh, get up in the morning. I spend about three, four hours, uh, you know, a- answering calls, emails, putting the mortgage stuff together. Then Dylan comes in. Uh, then we start vlogging. Cool. Then we, you know, figure out what, what's going to go happen for the week. We start shooting, he starts cutting in, I get some you know, calls that come in, put that stuff together, and then majority of my day today is uh, spent uh, engaging on social media. Cool. That's where most of my time is. That's direct messaging on, on uh, well, Instagram, whatever messaging. And you, you do your own YouTube. social media? I do my own social media. Okay, yeah. sweet. And are you, are you just on Instagram right now? or like Every, what, what, everywhere. Right? Everywhere? Yeah. Sweet. And how about, like, how, like for, for us, right, we kind of like, we are everywhere too. We mostly focus on Instagram, right? What other platforms are you focused on? YouTube, Facebook, Snap. Snap's been very loyal to me. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Uh, How do you grow on Snap, like from strangers? Through Instagram or? <laughs> I just add the friends that I have. I got like, I got a yeah, big yeah, decent yeah. database and they're yeah, all yeah. on my phone, right? So yep, yep. add them, they add you, and then eventually somebody else sees me and they're like, oh, who's this guy? Yeah. And then they just click on it and just, kind of grows that way man cool cool i haven't really thought about that i always like i see snapchat as like the 
the personal social media, you know? Even though all social media is, like, out there for everyone, I feel like Snapchat, for me at least, was, like, more so, like, my friends. And I kind of keep, like, the whole, like, business and media stuff out of my friend life just because, like, I don't want to feel like I'm using them. Hey, business, look, personal life and business life, they're almost the same, man. Yeah? Right? If you want to keep your kids and your wife away from it, that's that's fine, right? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But with your it, friends and stuff? Hey, look, man, the, the way I get business is not by selling. It's about building a relationship that's all it comes down to man Definitely. every time I go to a meeting I don't talk about hey look can I get a deal from you can I get a deal from you I don't care about that stuff they don't know what they know what I do and I'm gonna get deals for them but for me main thing is how's life how's health how's the kids what's going on you know can I assist in any way can I bring you value in any way they know they all know what I do and eventually uh, you know if I don't close a deal with them this year doesn't matter to me doesn't bother me because there's a lot of that that's all comes down to right relationship building. Uh, how'd you meet Dylan? Because we, we talked about it all behind camera, but like on camera, like how'd you meet Dylan? Dylan's this guy that followed me around. He was begging me. <laughs> 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 uh, I knew Dylan probably for a year. Uh, like I said, I used to go to all these hotels and, and network. Um, so Dylan was uh, he was working in one of those hotels, and you know we had conversations not about cameras or yeah, yeah, yeah. videography but we had conversations on oil and gas and pipelines and uh sports and just just everything and we hung out many times yeah, yeah. and it wasn't until a year later uh where you know i just said you know what's what's your end goal what do you what do you want to do he's like well i'm a videographer what do you, what do you mean you're a videographer <laughs> yeah like I, I shoot all this stuff i'm like dude i'm looking i've been looking for somebody like you for for a couple of months now and then you know, came into the office, we chatted, and I seen his work, and, you know, he started within, I, I think, he we went met, away. I went to Hawaii, yeah, then I came, came back, and, back and yeah, he started, a couple of weeks, so. yeah, a couple of weeks later, he started, I think we met, Same. like, uh, well, he came in, in, in uh, whatever, May, and then June, he started. Cool, what inspired you to start vlogging? Gary V. Gary V. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Shout out to Gary V. Yeah. I, uh, I did a speaking program, uh, in 2012. Okay. And then... We talked about personal branding back then, and it wasn't. It really didn't get get to my heart, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. so I didn't do a whole lot about it. And then, Khaled too, definitely Khaled as well, right? Okay. So, so looking at all these guys doing all this stuff and the money coming in, and yeah. you know they're growing from whatever twenty thousand to like a couple of million. Oh man, you know this is something I want to get. You know I want to do, and then eventually, uh, you know I I read Crush It and uh, just got pumped and then it, tw it was 20 2017 January 2017 I was like I'm gonna do this myself so I got the camera equipment got everything and then I have it in front of me and, and I'm on a phone like oh my hands getting sore put it down <laughs> and then a couple of times I forgot to hit record yeah and, you know doesn't that's doesn't record here so yeah. I was like I need to I, I just need to bring somebody in right Definitely. and I know a lot of young entrepreneurs can't afford to bring somebody in eventually you guys will be able to yeah, yeah. but uh, I just looked at my you know my budget can I you know can I fit somebody in there and, and sure I could and uh, if you guys can't see where you can cut and and bring somebody in right so cut the expenses you know hire somebody outside and, and yeah. let it grow right Definitely, that's sweet, man. Uh, and like, you, you were talking about the speaking event, right? In 2012, what was that? Like, you were learning how to speak or you were the one speaking? Um, it was a speaker leader program. So, okay. uh, you know, we're taught how to speak, how to uh, engage with, uh, with your audience, how to anchor your, your, uh, uh, your, your negative story and then build out of that. And yeah, it was just like a full on speaking, yeah, yeah. speaking course that I did for about eight months. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then you do a lot of investments, right? So, you know what, what my investments is now? Yeah. Right here in the personal brand. Yeah? Yeah. Is that your primary one you're focusing right on? Right now? Yes, okay. 100%. Okay. And have you ever done like other like private investments? Like, yeah. And what do you, like when you're making an investment, what do you look at for your ROI specifically? Well, it depends. I, I invested in, in many things. I uh, invested in stock market. Okay. Real estate. Okay. Uh, mortgages today. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Th those are my, my have you have you ever in invested into like uh, like um, a crypto brand? <laughs> no, not cri not crypto. I was gonna ask that after, but yeah, <laughs> but that it's up like crypto. Like, have you like looked into it at all? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Are you have you have anything in right now? No, no. no. Okay, just looking in. Yeah, cool. Well, back to the question: Have you ever in, like invested in uh in like a brand before? In a brand? Yeah. Like, what do you mean by that? Like uh, 
Like, like Apple start- or Amazon? No, 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 not, not like that, okay. not like that. Not stocks. No. More so like someone starting something. Like, you know, like, you, you watch Shark Tank at all? Yeah. Kind of like that. Have you ever tried something like no. that before? No. Would no. you try something like that? Uh, it's interesting that you brought that up. Uh, my future goal is, um, is to invest in, in companies. Cool. cool. And my, my first one I want is in 2020. Uh, would I do angel investments? No. What my goal is, is there's a lot of retirees coming up, probably in the next five, six years. Their children do not want their business because for whatever reason, yeah. that's not their passion. And mom and dad built this business and they don't know what to do with it. I love to take those businesses over and grow it. That's Definitely. that's my that's my plan. That's and then, cool. you know, add, add my experience to it, you know, leadership role, uh, social media role and, and expand that and, and go from there. Definitely, that's crazy. What's some, of that, some experience that happened in your life that made you who you are today? Like a positive experience, you'd say. You know what? Just looking at my surrounding, I wasn't happy. Okay. I think that's the most positive one I have. Right? Like, this is it. You know, not not this. Yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, like life. But like, yeah, just just looking around. Like, I I don't want to work for like thirty years doing this crap when I can do something that I love to do. Right? And and that just that was like your shifting point. That's, that's my burning desire. Like, I I don't want to be stuck there, man. Yeah. I, I want, there's so much more to life, man. So. Might as well, instead of complaining, going to work all day long, be happy, man. Be positive. Yeah. You know, go there, make a difference, and, and, and be happy and yeah. and help. Cool. All right, so we're towards the end of the show now, right? And we have these two s- small segments. Yeah. The first segment is called the 60-second hustle. Yeah. So you have approximately 60 seconds. You look into the camera. You say something that's on your chest or a message you want to get out, right? So that's, that's first. And the second segment is you call out who's coming on the show next. <laughs> and then the person you call up will respond in a video answer, yes or no, and they'll send it to us and we put it onto our Instagram page. Okay. With the, the audience. Okay. See. All right. Yeah. So you're yeah. Are you ready? Ready. Oh right, yeah, sixty seconds. Uh, look, you know, we're here for a limited time. Spend your time doing something that you love. You know, whatever it is, if it's in your personal life, in your business life, you know, just just find it. Find the you know your burning desire find what you want to do your your passion search for it if you need to spend one or two years figuring out go figure it out get a mentor get you know get somebody around you to uh that can guide you and go into it because you know we're on this planet for a limited time might as well work the, you know make the best out of it Sweet. 20 seconds I'm good man that's, that's, I'm perfect. Good, man. that's perfect that's, 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 that's perfect. all I can do that's beautiful who to reach out to oh man you got me on that one yeah shit like call someone it's kind of something someone who's like on the same venture or even entrepreneurial yeah. you know here's the thing I don't follow anyone no no like it's one of your buddies none of them do this no okay oh Alessandro I know you're watching bud <laughs> you're the next one and this is perfect for him this is absolutely perfect for him Alexander next time you're cooking we gotta have these guys on there uh, oh he's a chef yeah he's a kick ass chef you know, me and Josh were actually talking about that man we wanted to get a cook on and we're like we'll do the whole podcast in the kitchen where we're cooking something and do the podcast at oh the yeah, same yeah, time. yeah 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 don't worry Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sweet alright last question to end the show man are you are you planning on um, buying the Canucks Nope. No. <laughs> I don't watch hockey. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a hockey fan. No. <laughs> no. I mean, like you know, like I. There's no other. Like, I, I would have said Raptors, but like that's kind of. Yeah. Never, man. I, I'm yeah. not a. Yeah. N- not for me. Yeah, Sports team is not for me, man. Sweet. I just yeah. have to, you know, cause, like yeah, the Jets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have. I have no intention of buying any sports teams, man. <laughs> Zero. That's, Zero. This is awesome having you on, Sunil, and hopefully we'll keep in touch. Thanks for coming down, man. And that's it for the show, guys. Let's we'll see you, Josh. On the next one. Hold on, hold on one second, man. Josh, Josh. Next time. Next time. I want to see you in here. Next time. I want to do it. Yeah. Here we come. Some kind of. Here we come.